Okay, so we're going to switch over uh, to uh, business objects real quick, but the basic issue here is that if I hard code dates, um, I'm going to I'm in my report now, I'm going to go to the query. And you can see here, uh, I've got dates hard coded for the month of August, which that'll work fine for that month, but every month then I got to come change them, right? And that's, that is, um, that's kind of a hassle. Um, it is time consuming, you got to remember to go do that. So we can do a little better than that uh, by creating a prompt. So we can prompt for these. Um, okay, so now when I run this report, I don't have to actually come in and edit the query, um, but uh, as you might imagine, or you've experienced perhaps with either hard-coded dates or prompted dates, there's no way that I can schedule this because when I schedule it, I'm gonna have to answer that prompt if I have a prompt. And so just as before, I would have had to come into the query to change the dates. If I have it scheduled and I have it prompting for those dates, I've got to go into the schedule and change change those dates. So, so that's no good either. So I'm gonna, uh, let's just go ahead and run this query and I'm gonna prompt for a couple of dates. I'm just gonna run what I'm calling my base data query. And I am going to uh, choose uh, dates from uh, July 1st of last year. Okay, so oh, I passed it there. July 1st to December 31st. And the reason I'm, ex I'm choosing a larger range is just to demonstrate how we can uh, filter it down to the last month, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and run that uh, singular query. And um, we, will, we will fill out the rest of these queries as we go along. Um, so, I've got, uh, I'm gonna show three different solutions. One is um, filtering with variables within um, the Webby report, and then uh, filtering at the query level using freehand SQL, and then also filtering at the query level using what I'm calling a calendar universe. So I'm just showing this to say, yep, I, I'm not pulling any tricks here i actually have uh, data you know from july 1st on through you know if i go all the way to the end here we can see that it goes to um december 31st okay so i've got a, a series of variables i'm gonna just jump over to that oh i, I guess i should mention uh i've got a few tips throughout the along the way and then I summarize them at the end. So my first tip for you here is um, when you have prompts, sometimes, you know, if you, you might want to change the order of them or, you know, I, I don't know how, what the default order is for big business objects, maybe, or maybe, maybe the order in which you create them. But if I want to change that, I can just go into the query properties and I can move these around up and down um, so that allows me to, you know, maybe I, I've got another, uh, property of, you know, I'm dealing with financial transactions. Maybe I've got a tran, uh, transaction code prompt and just logically, I want that one first before the date range, or I want it at the end. That's how you, how you move them around. So that's, that's my first, uh, tip of the day. All right. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to this one a little bit. Uh, I already stated what my base data is. And then those are the three uh, approaches we're gonna take. 
So the first one being the variables, I want to show you this slide because I'm showing you what all the formulas are. Um, I'm not going to take the time to to parse through and create these. Um, I just want to show that to you. And then we're going to I've already got these created. Um, let's go over to here where I'm going to let's see, I guess I need to need to undo some uh, some filtering perhaps. Uh, well, let's just first look at what these variables uh, are. So how do I get to the first day of the previous month? Well, I'm taking um, my reference date. I've got I've got a reference date here that I've hard coded. I'm just going to hover over that. I've hard coded that to September 3rd, just as an arbitrary date. So then my first day of previous month kind of picks that date apart. I'm, I'm taking, you know, picking out the month and then I'm backing up a month. I'm putting a one in here for the first and, and then um, I'm accounting for the year here too. So what I end up with is my reference date being the third and and then my first and, and last dates uh, of the month. So then I want to filter what we saw on the first tab of July uh, all the way to December. I want to filter that to just August. Um, now, as I note here on the bottom of this slide, you can't compare objects in a filter. Um, I can't say where this, where financial transaction date is between these two dates. It uh, just doesn't, it's not possible. So what I do instead is I create a variable that says, is my financial transaction date between this first day of the previous month and last day of the previous month? If it is, I'm going to designate that as a one, which I interpret to be true. And you could make it any value as long as, you know, yes and no, true and false, whatever the case may be. And then uh, I'm going to, uh, go ahead and look at the filters here. Um, let's see. <clears throat> While you're doing that, Noel, there, there was yeah. um, a quick question that came in. What is the underlying database? It looks like it might be SQL Server, but it would be nice to know for sure. Right. Yes. Um, the underlying database for this is I, I, I'm, I'm using two different databases. So I am hitting our my I, I work at a bank. And so my banking platform vendors data is all Oracle. Um, but I'm going to show the freehand SQL that I do and the calendar universe. That's going to be SQL Server because that's what we have in house. So so I'm just. Uh, you know, I'm pulling kind of generic transaction data and I'm kind of, you know, leaving out all the account details because of proprietary concerns. So that's why I just have this very generic of a date and number of transactions, which is pretty much useless without context. So, so yeah, Oracle for the financial data and then SQL Server for the other items. Um, okay. Yep, so... Thanks. I took this this variable that I created called uh, previous bar previous month date range match, and I only want to see where it's equal to one. Um, let's let's just get rid of that filter, and you can see that this this uh, expands out. Now, one thing you may or may not realize is I don't need to have an object in a table in order to filter by it. So here I can show it's, you know, for July, it's 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way down to August. Now we start hitting once. And so sure enough, it's easy to just say right click and say I want to filter on that. But I don't need that there. Um, I can uh, get rid of that column. And then I can just say, well, I want to filter on this table. Now, since I didn't click on a column, it's not going to seed that for me. I have to click add filter go find my variable and say, you know, equal in list doesn't really matter, that that's a one. And now I'm filtered to just the transactions from August. So 
that's how we do the report filter. Uh, moving on to the next method. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with freehand SQL. This used to be something that was uh, available years and years ago, and then it went away for a few years, and now it's been back for a while again. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I have this query that, and I'll I'll just uh, switch back over to my slides to show how this is what if I were to run that query I just showed in in Webby. I drop this into SQL Server, and, and the syntax for this is going to be a little different depending on your database platform. So we use all SQL Server internal. The Oracle I was mentioned is our, our banking vendor, but we use SQL Server, so that's what I'm familiar with. And so I can, you know, um, create this query that just based on a reference date, it just gives me the first and last day of the previous month. And you know I can I can manipulate this in any a lot of different ways. First day of the last quarter, first day of the last year. I have all of those things in the calendar universe that we're going to look at in a few minutes. But this link um, shows a little bit about um, how uh, how to do this this uh, date manipulation. Um, I also want to point out at, at this point. Uh, um, you know, we can do, put a prompt in freehand SQL. Um, so I have, uh, let's see, if I wanted to put a prompt here um, for this date, the way that I would do that, I'm just going to create a quick, a quick uh, query based on my calendar universe. Um, okay, so it's date, and I, I want a prompt on this date. So I can say, okay, I want a prompt where it's equal, and then set whatever options I want here, okay? Uh, I don't want a list of values, I want to keep it. You can't do an optional prompt in freehand SQL, so that's not going to work anyway. And then I just hit okay. Now, if I look at this query script, I can take this text right there, copy it, and go over to my freehand SQL, and I could drop it right in here. Okay, now, and I validate that, I'm like, yep, that's okay. Now, one thing that to watch out for here, uh, this has caught me a few times, is I don't want the time associated with this. So I just got to take the T off, and now it's just a date. Um, and and then I hit OK here. And if I were to refresh that freehand SQL, uh, dates uh, doesn't like something. <laughs> well, suffice it to say, I, I've, I have something syntactically not quite right here, but I just, my point there was um, that is how I can get um, the syntax correct for the prompt. I, I think I must have something wrong with some quotes or something here. So I'm just gonna uh, put that aside to undo this change. I'm just gonna uh, revert and get out and just go right back in, okay? So that uh, now I am back to having my hard coded date there, and that, and that that'll be fine. So then, what what this will do though, that'll give me my first and last day of the month. Now I'm going to um, run my query here, but I'm going to get my dates from the from the freehand SQL query. Um, this is much more efficient because I'm not. I'm, you know, if I'm going to filter in the report, I got to bring back more data than I need and then filter it there. Here, I'm just going to bring back what I'm looking for. Now, the the one thing to remember here, and this is another um, tip that I listed, is when I'm getting the data from another query, let's just put this down here, I can't use 
uh, between. So here, result from another query, it's grayed out. I don't know why, if that's a bug, a feature, not sure. But if you use greater than, and then an, the same object and less than, uh, then I can get those items, okay? So let's, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and run this whole thing rather than picking and choosing queries. Um, the, the tip that I passed over, um, if you want to grab your prompt text or if you wanna do some formatting, I always kind of struggled with, well, what, what do I put in my, in my to date formula to be able to convert it to a date? And it's right here. Now you can't copy that. Like I can't, you know, select that and copy that text. But if I write that down, that is exactly what I need in the to date function. We'll, we'll take a look, a look at that in, in just a moment. So, okay. So let's go ahead and run that. Um, And then uh, now if I go to my tab here where I'm querying by the freehand SQL, I don't need a filter here, right? My filtering happened in the query. So I didn't bring back extra data. I brought back just what I, what I needed. Any, is that making sense so far? I see there's some questions. I haven't had a chance to look at them. Lucy, is there anything? Or Paul, anything pertinent there that we should answer? Well, there was one that, that came in the chat, um, you know, uh, saying that they they want to have the prompt dynamic, but still allow users to be able to enter date prompts. Yep. Um, so, and that's if, if they need to change to see specific dates of data, you know, other than the um, the, the default. So. Um, well, the, the challenge here is you can't, you can't present the users with the calendar and also schedule it. So, but what I've come up with is a, a workable compromise for us is in this calendar universe, which ultimately we're, is what we're gonna look at next, is that I prompt the users for how many days they wanna go back. And that it's not as good as the calendar, but it's schedulable. So we we kind of it, it's a workable compromise. Now I can I can say you know how many days you want to go back, how many months, how many quarters. I have all that built into there. So if I if I were to say here we are February first, and I want to say I want to go one month back, that could then give me the January ending and beginning and ending dates. If I put in a parameter of minus two, that'll take me back to December and so on, however far you wanna go back. That's the only thing I've been been able to figure out of how to make it dynamic and yet, you know, allow the users to prompt for something. Because if I, if I present the users with a calendar, I, I can't schedule it then. Then I've gotta have a second version of the same report perhaps for scheduling. And that's what I've tried to stay away from, so. All right, so let's, yeah, let's I, look I, at what this somebody, calendar universe does. Yeah, yes, no, Paul? Was, yeah, somebody did put that, that you, know, you could have two versions of the uh, uh, of the report. Yeah. Uh, without a doubt. Um, I, I also wonder myself about some of the capabilities available in publishing, um, you know, but then you you, in, <laughs> you bring in a whole new set of, uh, uh, of issues with that as well. Yep. Um, and And what I've tried to focus on and, and we've, I, I've been using this calendar universe. I created this in 2013. And it like, I can create a report with a dynamic date range in minutes. It is, now it's a, certainly, there was a lot of work in creating that universe up to, to start with. But once that was created, it is so simple to create these, these types of reports. So. So let's take a look at how that works. So now I'm yeah, looking just, at the just, calendar. Yeah, just while yep. we're, we're on that topic, because it, it has actually generated some interesting okay. uh, chat here. You, you create variables from a set date variable, which would later, um, you know, need to change. Question: Absolutely. Why not use the system date, sys date? 
you could create rolling variables like sure. the last 90 days or the last full quarter. Yeah, you, you absolutely could do that. Um, I guess the, the reason that I um, picked a static date is because my screenshots for the percentage or for the presentation were for August and I wanted to show the same data here in the, in the webinar as I had my screenshots. But yeah, I could, in my reference date, um, I could put, I could absolutely put current date here or current date minus whatever. Um, the, the thing there though is what, I showed this example as this is serviceable, but I don't think, I would not recommend doing this with variables in the report. But I wanted to show this as kind of an entry point and progression of how, how we, what the options are and why you'd want to do one versus the other. Like the, for me, this, um, you know, do I, I don't think I have this on here, but I mean, just, you just look at the, well, that's, I don't know if you guys, one of my other tips that I included is throwing a query summary on here and I can see how long it takes and how much data. Um, and I can see that this base data query, well, I've got it aggregated at the date level. So I'm only getting 130 rows of data. Um, but my total, you know, I've filtered this down to one month and already for one month, um, how many transactions we got? We got 5 million transactions times six months. You know, I've got, I, I'm bringing back 30 million transactions, you know, in aggregate for sure. But uh, you know, other situations, you might want to see the detail. But I'm bringing all those back to the report. And what I'm suggesting is don't do that. Let's do it with, at minimum, you can, you can create a freehand SQL query today. Now, provided your organization hasn't taken away freehand SQL rights, which in some cases, that may be the case. Um, but if you're doing SQL Server, you could take this query like I have in the presentation and you could use that right now. You could manipulate it for what you need for, uh, you know, beginning a quarter or whatever. If you're using Oracle or some other database, you're going to have to come up with different syntax. But for sure, um, yes, you could base this on current date. But but my contention there is you're bringing back more data than you need to. So freehand SQL gets us is better. Um, but you know you have to know um let's see i want to go to this one it it takes you know takes some technical uh skill to know how to write this thing and know how to apply it uh but it works it's more efficient i'm only getting the data that i want for the month that i want okay so let's we're i want to keep moving along cuz uh, i know the clock's ticking here so if we have the calendar universe, which I have created, so I'm, I am actually just for, so I'm working on the same date. I'm taking the reference date from my freehand SQL query and saying, okay, use that as my base date here. And then from this date's perspective, go get me the previous month and so on and so forth. Now I have built into my universe and, and I want to point out that, um, that, uh, I, I wrote a blog post about this, uh, I guess in 2014, that describes how I built this calendar universe. So it it's all there. Um, you could go read that. I mean, if you want to connect with me, you know, afterward on LinkedIn or whatever, I can I can provide some more detail there. But that's the that's the genesis of of what I'm doing here. But um, so my point in how this this took work up front, but then I just have all these things, right? Um, I'm going to slide those to the end and refresh this. And there's there's no extra work for me to, to get this. So this is just saying from the perspective of September 3rd, this is the first day of the previous quarter. This is the last day of the previous quarter. And I can, you know... What we use most often internally for our filters is, is uh, this uh, universe filter called relative days. That is, how many days do I want to back up? Most of the stuff we're running for the previous day. 
And then from that date, go get the previous month, previous quarter, previous year, whatever. So then uh, similarly, just like I took these freehand SQL dates and I'm filtering by those, I'm gonna take these calendar dates and I'm gonna filter by those here, okay? So the, the net result for the freehand SQL filtered query or the calendar universe filtered query is the same. My, my point is, and, and I'll just go to, uh, go to this uh, tab, tab and table that I've got and just show that I have no additional filters here, okay? Um, that once you have the work done of setting up the universe, it is really easy to just come in and, you know, I go to my, my universe that's got all my financial data and, you know, I create a calendar query. I create my financial data query. And I'm I'm done. I'm running the efficient uh, query, and it was easy to build because we had that that universe. So questions questions there on the freehand SQL versus calendar universe. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of. Um comments coming in on the, on the chat, Noel. Um, a use case for using variables is when the user doesn't know what dates to use beforehand. So they would run the query multiple times if they had to specify it in the query. With variables, you could give them a bigger data set, but they get something, sure. um, you know. Um, yep, that's certainly valid. Yeah, that's frustrating. Um, and then also, uh, Someone else commented that they get the date universe, but again, why use a reference date? You could write though <clears throat> these without a reference date. Well, uh, I could, but I'm always thinking about scheduling and what if it fails? Like, so I've I can put this my calendar date um, or my calendar universe. Let's just uh, get rid of this query and. Now, my, my calendar database has every date for like 75 years in it, okay? So I have to limit it down to a day. So I could put today, right? And then there's, there's no prompt. It just gets today. But what if that fails and I don't get it fixed today? I, and I, you know, say we had some catastrophic meltdown and the system was down for a day. And I, tomorrow now, we, we have between 500 and maybe five to 600 scheduled reports. I can't go into 500 reports and change the filter to look back one more day. But if I'm prompting for a day, I could go to those schedules. I mean, it would be rough, but if I ran it instead of minus one to look at yesterday, in, or instead I wanna look at two days ago, I just run it with a minus two, it's done. I, I don't need to do anything else. So that's that's my reasoning for for doing that is on a in a scheduled report scenario and I have a failure that I don't get to until today how do I rerun these because you know I said I've been doing this for 10 years for about 7 of these, those years I was the only person so I needed to engineer things that it was easier to maintain and, and to recover from, um, you know, a failure uh, of, uh, for whatever reason. So that's, that's my thinking. Makes sense. It really does. Um, John Clark came in with a question of the examples that you presented. Did you um, compare performance between them? Assuming that the calendar it, universe is, is most efficient, how much more efficient is it? Um, well, let's, let's take a look here. So I've got my query summary. I think I threw it on this tab. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not a lot different here. I, you know, I'm getting 
th this duration is in seconds. So it took four seconds to get six months of data. Um, and here it took three seconds to get just for August. Um, and then, and I think the freehand SQL versus the calendar universe is not gonna be any performance difference. I think what you'd see now, this, this aggregation uh, is all happening at the universe level, right? The, all I have is um, the date and the number. So that, that grouping and totaling is happening on the database. If I were to have you know, more transaction details, like, okay, I want the amounts, I want the tran codes, I want the accounts, you know, then I can't do the grouping at the universe level. I'm gonna have to bring back all those 5 million records or whatever it is. And, and then I think you're gonna see that performance, you know, really balloon. Um, in, a, in a different universe, uh, in a different area of our business, we do have the scenario where we have, um, you know, millions of transactions per day. And so we really try and, you know, pare it down to only bring back the bare minimum of what I need um, and then do any re remaining filtering or exploration at the, at the report level. But yeah, I think the, the performance is negligible just because we're, I'm aggregating at the, at the universe level, but um, certainly it'd be interesting to do some testing on that uh, to know the specifics. That's great. That's great. No, no more questions. Okay, so uh, that's kind of all I have with re with respect to the calendar universe in particular. And as I was working on this, though, I I came across a, another scenario. I thought this would be a good a good place to to mention it. And and so just the idea here is that um, I have all the transactions for a month, but someone might want to say, well, I want to have uh, all the transactions for every day, even if there are no transactions for a day. So how do you do that? Um, well, there's this function called time dim that will take a date and it will extrapolate the missing dates. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to replace that there. Okay. Now it, it reformatted it for me. Let me put the other... I don't like that format. Okay, so now I have the missing dates with, you know, and, and I could format this to show a zero instead of null, but now the time dim shows me all those missing dates. But I would argue that this is not quite right either because I don't know if you, there's a subtle thing missing. Anybody notice it? The first is missing. But the time dim function isn't smart enough to know, oh, hey, you know, it's just going to say, well, here's your first one, here's your last one, I'll fill in the gaps. But how do, what do I do to get that? Well, the solution there is, I'm just going to go back to my query. And the, the thing I want is I want a query with all of the dates in my range. So here I, I'm not, you know, I don't have any sort of first day of the month, last day of the month here. I'm taking, I'm using that as the filter for my other query so that I have all the dates in this query. Now, certainly I could have done something else that just that simplified this and just said, show me the month of August, 2021 or something like that. There's a lot of different ways to get this. And in fact, you could even do a freehand SQL query to get all the dates in a range. So this is doing what's called a, a CTE, a common table expression. This will generate all my dates within these two, within this range. Now, again, your syntax on different databases is gonna be different, but most databases should support this kind of thing. This is SQL Server syntax, okay? So what I have then is, let's go over to my last tab here. Um, got to reorganize this by query. So what I've done here is I have merged on the financial transaction date from my 
from this universe or from this query and my date from this calendar all dates query. And then um, I, let's see, I gotta find my variable. Do, do, do. do I need to create this one? So I wanna create um, a date. And I think it's easy enough. It, this isn't always this easy, but in this case, I think I can just do that. Yeah. So there I've got all my missing dates, including the first, okay? So that uh, that then then I can show because I, I mean I'm sure you guys have come across scenarios of you know somebody wants to some user wants to know how many sales that I have on this day or that day, but they want to know when there's none. Um, and then you can do all sorts of creating creative filtering. I mean this is a topic for another webinar. Maybe you guys have already done one. It's on merging data and all the different types of filtering that you can do when you have merged queries, you can kind of simulate, you know, what we would say in SQL, uh, you know, a left join, a right join, uh, where not exists kind of things. Um, so that, uh, I, I kind of like uh, using the calendar uh, for this sort of thing because it really um, shows you a true picture of what's going on rather than you know, back over on, on these, you know, it's like, well, you know, those dates are missing and it, it's, you know, you, it's, uh, it's not a complete picture, right? So, so to, to kind of wrap things up here, it's kind of sliding through the ones we've already talked about. Um, so, you know, we started out with the hard coded values, and I think we can agree that that's less than ideal. You've always got to go into the query and change it. Prompted is better, but you can't schedule it. Um, and, and also, these both of these methods are using uh, variables within the report and associated filters. So it's inefficient because you're, you're pulling back more data than you need to. Now, it, you know, in our example, it, it was relatively insignificant. I think there was a second difference, but if we extrapolate that over, you know, a larger data set, um, you're going to see the difference. Uh, freehand SQL uh, is easy if you know how to write the SQL and if you have access to actually add freehand SQL. Um, and it's uh, you only bring back the data you need, and so the. For me, the calendar universe is is the the best of all possible options. Um, the hard work's been done in the universe, and in reality, for us, we did that hard work nine years ago, and we're still using it. Um, and I can I can train up my users um, with even most the most basic webby knowledge to create a calendar universe, pick their dates, and use them in another query. So I get the same efficiency with a little more uh, ease of use as I did with uh, Freehand SQL. And then on my last slide, I just kind of uh, put together these various tips um, from throughout the presentation. And that's all I have. More questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer. That was great, Noel. Yeah, there was a couple of things that did, uh, did come in. Um, Someone was um, someone was asking, um, how did you get the query summary? Yes. Yep. Um, so I mean, you can put it on any tab. I'll just create another one. Uh, so I right click, said Add Report, and then under Report Elements, there are some predefined cells. So Query Summary being one of them, and then. Uh, I don't really like how it centers everything. So a lot of times I'll uh, switch that to uh, be left aligned, but it gives me, you know, all sorts of um, helpful metadata. I mean, a, a summary of my query and its filters. So this is only something I use in development of a report. I generally don't leave this in there when in the final version, just because I think my users would have more questions than it would answer. Um, but it certainly is helpful in the development. And I would just invite you to explore 
uh, the other predefined, uh, you know, cells that are that are out there. Um, the report filter summary uh, is another one. Um, so you can see here on on uh, on the previous month's date range, I have this uh, filter that says it it's got a that variable's got to equal one. Um, yeah, query summary is the one I use the most. Um, but yeah, that's how I got to it: report elements, cell, and then query summary. Um, <clears throat> for the calendar universe, is your logic in the universe, or is it in the underlying database? It is in the universe. Um, so, and and I have, uh, you know, based on various users' requests, you know, I've added things. So I had, I had a user that he wanted to go twelve months back, thirteen months back, and eighteen months back. So rather than doing a bunch of different queries um, with all of those, I just created them, you know? And so, so just to give you an example of what this looks like, let's that, just create a new calendar query. Um, so I will filter it to just today. So these items are what's in my database. Uh, and these are specific to us, you know, when, and, you know, so some of this stuff, uh, like it could be as simple as a date. And then we had some information about, um, you know, is it, a, is it a tax day? Is it a bank holiday? Is it a market holiday? Everything else could be derived, you know, from the date, you can get the year, you could get the quarter. So those things wouldn't need to be there, but that was a pre-existing structure. So I just went and ran with that. Um, let me get rid of all those um, with the exception of today's date. Uh, so then these derived ones, this is what I created in the universe. So um, let's just go with, uh, you know, oh, the year ones. Okay, so then, and it's, it is not intuitive at all of what's going on here, but you know, I, I referenced that link in the presentation of doing all this date math. I mean, basically what this is doing in SQL Server, it's saying, okay, let's look at year zero and how many years difference is it between year zero and whatever date I've specified for, for my date, my reference date, which is today, the difference of get date and the date from the database is zero. So that's today. Um, and then it, it does this manipulation with year zero as a reference point. And, you know, I add, subtract one, whatever. I mean, I, I don't, that takes a lot of effort to work that out for sure. Um, but then, you know, you, you, you do that work, you put that in an object in the universe and you never have to do that again. Um, one other thing that I wanted to point out is I did some, let's put in the, the week one. So whenever I, I have week, I, I have a universe prompt that asks, what's the first day of the week? Because some of my users wanted reports that would run from, you know, not, not sat Sunday to Saturday or Monday to Sunday. They wanted it to go from Friday to Thursday. You know, what the, the, what brought this all about is I had a user that had a staff meeting on Friday and they wanted to know their team stats from the previous Friday to the day before Thursday. And I thought, well, how do I, how do I do that and make it flexible enough so that I, I, I never want to solve if possible for just one person's situation. I want to take care of their situation and other people's that that may come up as well. So that way I can, um, you know, okay, what's today? Today's Tuesday, right? If I say, well, the first day of my week is Wednesday, then the first day of the previous week with today as the base date and Wednesday being the first day of the week would be 
uh, January 19th. And then the ending of the previous week would be the 25th um, with the understanding that the reference date is today and my week starts on Wednesday. So that's awesome. Next question. Um, can you share your universe or is it considered proprietary work? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I can't, I, I haven't figured out how I would like upload a, a UNX file for you. There's nothing proprietary about it. Um, and in fact, I mean, I can go to um, we, yeah, this it, link it, here. If you're able to share it, we can work with you, Noel, to, uh, to get yeah. that. Yeah, I, I would just encourage people to, to go to this, this link here. I mean, I, this is out on the SAP forums. Um, it it's all here. I mean, you'd have to you'd have to work to build it yourself, but all the details are here. Um, the The main thing is my universe is based on a table that exists with that set of whatever it is, twenty five columns, and so along with that script. I'd have to, along with the, the universe, I'd have to provide a script to create that table. Um, and I guess I just never wanted to get that deep in having to support such a thing. But um, I think if you spend a little time with this blog post um, with a universe designer, you could whip one up pretty easily. Um, nice. I have also thought about, you know, if you, I showed how, Let's see here. I got to get out of my full screen. Okay, so this this universe was was uh, you know all dates. Um, actually, this one, yeah. So this gives me all the dates between here. You know, I could. I I haven't tested this, but I'm. I think it would work just to build a universe based on a query like this that encompasses all the possible dates you would want. You know, we've got dates in our table out to the year 2079, I think. Um, but I could, I could open this up and I think I could generate a list of dates for quite some time. And then in essence, whenever you'd run this, it would create that on the fly. I don't, I don't think that's most efficient. It'd be better to just have a calendar table. But I think that might work. But yeah, I, I would encourage people to just check out that that blog post. Um, and you know, if you got a question, comment on it. I check the SAP forms. I don't know, often once a week, maybe. So I'll see it. Right. No, that's awesome. And uh, we will be sharing your your slides uh, with everyone um, who registered for the. Uh, um, for the webinar, but thank you again so much, Noel. So let me hand over to uh, to Lucy now. Okay, so someone had had mentioned I don't remember who that they just they just add these kind of date reference kind of filters to their universes directly, mm -hmm. and 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 that makes perfect sense if you can do that. The reason we don't do that, I mentioned our banking platform vendor, their database is Oracle. They have provided us, you know universes that access their data and I can't change them. So I, it's, it's, I am not allowed to, I, I mean, technically, yes, I could go add those date filters to their universe, but if, if anything ever went wrong, they would say, well, why did you modify our universe? You, you messed it up. Like, so I can't touch the universes that they provide to us. So, but with our calendar universe, I can always, you know, do this whole filter based on another query. And now that functionality is available to me against all their universes, only having to build one universe. So that's the reason there. 